right, all right. Now, I know y'all just, you know, went to the bathroom if you needed to. Uh, got a little bit of coffee. I see some brothers with the coffee. Josh Spires, what up? I see you with the coffee in the back. Shout out to you. Um, but see, with this breakout session, when we talk about Hebrew Israelites, let, raise your hand if you heard of Hebrew Israelism. Raise your hand. Yeah, some of y'all need two hands. There we go. Okay. Um, do you got a family member that's in Hebrew Israelism? Raise your hand. Have you ever been walking downtown on Woodward trying to have a good time or at the river walk and then your man tell you, Hey, brother, come on up over here. Or sister, come over here. What's your nationality? That ever happened to you before? Yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about a little bit today. Now, I want to I wanna be clear. In this breakout session, we're going to have a little bit of fun. It's going to be serious, too. So you can give me some amens if I make a good point. Feel free. You can also say, that's right, if y'all know what I'm talking about. That's, there we go. There we go. Or, or you can even say, bring it out, if, you know, if we're making a good point. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. That's where y'all could have said, that's right. Okay. <laughs> there you go. I need that too. Let us, let us pray. Father God, we come before you right now through your son, Jesus Christ, and we just thank you for your grace and your mercy on today uh, for this conference to be equipped as a believer, but to also challenge the unbeliever as well, Lord. We thank you for everything. We thank you for the fellowship on today. And even with this session, Lord, convict us, equip us, love on us, but also encourage us because there is a fight that's going on outside and even in the church. But let us remain equipped for the gospel. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. What's the, can we read this all together? That's on the screen. Can we read it together? Uh, one, two, three. Y'all read this. So I want y'all to remember this. So the Lord's curse is on who? The house of the wicked, right? But he blesses what? The dwelling of the righteous. So I want you to keep a question in mind. How can you be uh, the righteousness of God but also cursed at the same time? I want you to really think about that real quick. What is Hebrew Israelism? This is a big thing that's going on, right? Hebrew Israelism in this country, in America, is the fastest growing religion in America right now. They says 1.5 African Americans that uh, believe or believe in some type of uh, doctrine within Hebrew Israelism. They say within the next 20 years, um, uh, one out of every black man that you see, he will either uh, had a, a, a engage, an engagement with a Hebrew Israelite or he's going to be a Hebrew Israelite. <clears throat> the trajectory right now, it hasn't even uh, capped right now. It's just starting out. And it's real popular. It's hot right now. <laughs> See, right now or today, I want to really deal with um, the, what, what we would call the camps or the One West Doctrine. And you probably start talking about, what, what are you talking about? We're going to get to it in a second. But the camps or the One West Doctrine is the most uh, popular belief of Hebrew Israelism that you will see today, especially on the street corners, but mainly on the Internet. I got a couple of videos I want you guys to watch. Now, some of you may say it ain't that bad. Hebrew Israelism is not that bad. It's just some brothers that's trying to get deeper into the Bible. They want to get to know their nationality, their ethnicity. If I find out that I'm a Hebrew Israelite, if I feel like I'm a, if I believe that I'm truly an Israelite, then maybe I feel closer to God. If I keep the commandments, then maybe I feel closer to God. No, 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 it's deeper than that. I'm going to show you a couple videos real quick. I got a few videos today, and I think it may be eye-opener to some of us. Real quick, this video right here, this young man is dating this girl. She's Italian. And you got the Hebrew Israelites from this group called Sakari. And they're about to just say some, some vile things. Let's take a look. But when I asked you what your nationality was, you claimed Italian. You know enough to say that your lineage, that you descend from people that come from Italy. You know enough. So when you say, oh, I don't know, I don't know, the Italians had slaves. Italians not only had slaves, but they left Italy and came over here to America and joined up with the people that had slaves. And then started to fight alongside the people that were enslaving. Bring that 
You are a descendant of that. So if she supports the cause of your people, which is black people, and black people have to cleanse the land that they live in that has been polluted with their own blood, the only way we cleanse it is by the blood of him that shed it that she possesses. Do you really support his people? you would never even allow me to be rude to you or to your girl. You know I'm not being rude. I'm just being direct. There's no other way. You know what? That's your girl, right? Would you allow me to give you $10 million to, to, to kill her? No. I'll give you $50 million. Let me rape her. No. You would never. So there ain't no other way. You can't give me the land back. You can't pay me a amount of money. The only way I can get the rape, rob, and murder of my people back is to shed their blood. They gotta go. They gotta go. Give me, give me. See, this is a wicked brother named Tazama from Sakari over in San Diego. Did y'all hear what he said? The only way that white people can be atoned for their sin is if what? Shedding the blood. See, this group believes that in the kingdom that they'll have slaves and they can do whatever they want to white people or all nations. So he says in another video that he needs 200 million dead white folks' bodies before he can even say that one white man is good. Oh, Dad, you're taking it too far. That's just one brother, you know. He, he, maybe he's just extreme. Okay, well, this group right here, they'll be a little bit more organized. We'll get to it in a second, but... Look what they did in the city of Detroit. see the problem seriously you had 2,000 black men also Native Americans some some Native Native Americans and some Hispanics too that walk in the streets of Detroit 2,000 men deep and as Elder Mike talked about one of the songs was we left the church we left your pastors we left your teachers your musicians yeah they said they left the musicians they like oh man all right they left the musicians they said, we left your mothers, your fathers, because they left the church. Now, we know if anything is antichrist, and what spirit does that come from? Satan himself, right? This is a big problem. One, groups want to ki- one group want to kill 200 million white people. Another group, we see 2,000 men walking in the streets of Detroit. If this does not wake you up to say that we need to do something to engage our culture, our context, urban apologetics, then I don't know what to tell you. If you can sit here and watch these videos, and I'll go no other further than just these two videos, if you sit here and say, man, who cares? I'm comfortable in my bubble. Well, how these groups move, they'll infiltrate your bubble and will convert you to thinking what they believe. Why is it called Hebrew Israelism? Typically, when, uh, when we bring up the topic of Hebrew Israelites, we tend to call them black Hebrew Israelites. But truth be told, this movement, this movement doesn't just affect black people, but also Hispanics and Native Americans. Hebrew Israelism is a better name to give this movement because this movement is not just catered to black people. Amen. What is Hebrew Israelism? 
Hebrew Israelism is a religious ideology that believes all blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the true Israelites of the Bible. Now, this is what they believe about white people. That the white man is the devil or Esau. Now, for some of you may say, now, why would I be Esau? Well, they believe that white people are Esau because they say, well, when white people get mad, they get red. Now, some of you are like, come on, bro, that's just too simple, that's stupid. I know. But this is what they believe, all right? This is what they believe. <laughs> or Esau and, uh, and that other nations who are the enemies of Israel will not inherit the kingdom of God. This view is typically held by Israelite camps, all right? Hebrew Israelites teaches that African Americans can trace their heritage back to the Bible by using Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15 through 68. That's when one of y'all is supposed to say, that's right. There you go. Okay. Hebrew Israelites teaches that the curses of verses 15 through 68 follow blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And these curses are the signs that show that every black, Hispanic, and Native American is the true Israelite. But the main idea of Hebrew Israelism is that minorities have been stripped of their identity and they need to wake up to their true identity as Israelites in order to please Yahweh. All right, let's keep going. So my question, why is Hebrew Israelism on the rise? Why? This could be a, a many uh, reasons why, but I got four reasons, but I'm going to start with one, though. Ah. The prosperity gospel. Especially that brother right there, but I'll get into it in a second. You know why? You know why I point him out though? You know why I point him out? Because he's in the city of Detroit. I can't tell you how many brothers I know that say, man, I left the church because of prosperity gospel. Where my mom, who's a she's a single mother, not not my I'm talking about other brother situations, where they have said, Man, I'm uh, my mom is a single mother. She's trying to take care of a home, and we go to a prosperity gospel church, and a prosperity preacher told my mom to give everything she had, while guess what? We have no food in the fridge, no lights, no nothing, but she gave her last to the prosperity preacher who was greedy and gives nothing and doesn't serve anything, but he, he looks at himself as a guy. This is a problem. This is a problem. And if we don't call out this, this stuff right here, then we contribute to the problem as well. Look at this. This was back in 2017. What is it, 2000? And it con continues to do it on, right? That's in 2017. The prosperity gospel, lack of strong biblical teaching in the church, lack of biblical discipleship, the internet, and a lack of evangelism are the reasons why we see Hebrew Israelism on the rise. See, verse 2 kills me. Because you get people that say, man, I ain't got to get that deep. Why you ain't got to get that deep? Well, you know, that ain't my thing, really. You know, I just love to come to church. Yeah, but, 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 but why, why don't we study the scriptures? Because guess what? You talk to any cult, they get deep. They're wrong, but they get deep. And we're the only ones that say, I ain't got to do get deep. You know why? Because that's the pastor's job. Because I come to church just to feel good. No, no, no. We need to, yeah, we can feel good in church. We should come to church to be encouraged as well. That's a part of it. But we need to have strong biblical teaching within the church as well. Because when you have strong biblical teaching in this church, then you have a church that is strong within the word of God. We need that. Lack of biblical discipleship. Do we spend time with other men? Do we spend some time with other women in the word where we can get together and we can go through the word of God ourselves to build up a strength and an endurance in the word of God? Because when we're intentional about our biblical discipleship, then the cults, they can't come in. And if they do come in, when we understand, when we have strong biblical teaching in the church, yeah, so when the cults come in, because remember what Paul said in Acts chapter 20. He said, as soon as I leave here, one of y'all going to rise up, and y'all ain't even going to spare the flock. But when you understand what the Bible says, strong biblical teaching, and you have biblical discipleship, guess what? When that, uh, that wolf comes up in the church, you can spot him out. But when you don't know your Bible, that wolf can come in there, and he ain't going to spare nobody. We, we got to be better. The internet. The internet is a problem. Because if you go on, uh, as uh, Elder Mike Holloway would say, oh, wicked Sakari, as he would call him, 
they get 200,000 views each and every video. It'll say something like, uh, uh, Coon and Christian get destroyed by the prophets. You're like, man, that's a horrible title. <laughs> then you get into the comments and dude's like, yeah, you cut them. You did it again, chief priest. Come on, man, chief priest. And I, I ain't going to get into that. Um, and then, and then uh, point five, lack of evangelism. We were downtown a couple weeks ago. It was me, Johnny, and an elder Mike, and we had a couple more brothers. Um, shout out to Leo and also Pastor Alvin as well. We've been going downtown to preach the gospel. Pastor Alvin tells me, he said, hey, Dez, he said, go holler at my man because he tell him you, he was asking a question about the Old Testament. I said, all right, cool. We go over there. He said, no, brother, I don't even need to answer no more. I said, oh, oh, shoot. All right. He said, I don't need to answer no more. He said, you know why? I said, why? He said, well, see, when y'all had the speakers there with four brothers or uh, four or five brothers with some loud speakers, I thought y'all was Hebrew Israelites. He said, but, because, but he said, but I noticed the difference because of two reasons. Because of what y'all were preaching and y'all behavior as well. See, a couple things, they know, people know the difference between a Christian and a Hebrew Israelite, a true Christian and a Hebrew Israelite. Because of what the word says, if you have strong biblical teaching in the church, right? And if you have biblical discipleship, then guess what you're also building in the church? Character and maturity. Amen? See, when you do those things, you separate yourselves from the cults, especially Hebrew Israelites. They said, they said, man, we, we knew the difference. But you know what killed me, though? He thought they were something different. He thought we were the Hebrew Israelites because he said we never seen the Christians out here. When, we, when people say we don't see the church out here, it's a rare thing. It's like a treasure. It's like a dime a dozen. Guess what? We shouldn't be a treasure or a dime a dozen. Guess what? We should be out there all the time. Where they say, man, I see the Christians out here every Saturday, every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Did I say Friday already? And Friday too. <laughs> but when we don't have evangelism, the cults run amok. Elder Mike was preaching on the corner. And then one brother, he said he ran. He ran because he had to hear about what thus said the Lord. And he said, what must I do to be saved? He got saved on the spot. <laughs> That's why we do it. Got 29 minutes, all right. William Saunders Crowdy to One West. This is all, this all gonna make sense. Our earliest accounts of Hebrew Israelism in America in 1892 comes from a man named William Saunders Crowdy. Saunders Crowdy believed he received a revelation. You remember what Elder Mike was talking about? He received a revelation from the Lord one night. It's always at night too, while in the woods. While in the woods, and it's always in the woods too. Y'all notice that? Always in the woods at night. What you doing in the woods at night? But anyway, <laughs> while you in the while in the woods, Crowdy said that the Lord gave him the seven keys. He said he got the seven keys to restore the church. The main idea of the seven keys were to teach people to keep the Ten Commandments, and if people were to keep the Ten Commandments, then their eyes would be open to the gospel. That ain't Bible. I don't obey the law and then I receive the gospel. No, 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 no. When I know who Christ Jesus is, is, that's when I receive salvation through faith. That's when I'm justified. We'll talk about that in a minute. So that was William Saunders Crowdy. 1 West 125th. Now this brother name is uh, Abba Bivens right here, and that's Aria. I'm about to bring, bring it all together. 1 West 5th Avenue in Harlem, New York, was the headquarters of the original Israelite school of Torah in 1969. The founder of the school was a, name, a, a man named Abba Bivens. Now, Bivens was considered to be John the Baptist reincarnated. After Abba Bivens was murdered by the hands of Muslims, three of his students, Ariah, Mo, Moshe, and uh, uh, what is it, uh, Yaqab, uh, began a new school on 125th Street called ISUPK. Now, don't get it twisted. This is not the same ISUPK as we know of today. That's a whole new ISUPK. We'll talk about them in a second. But you see these splinter groups here? Where at first it starts with one brother right here, Abba Bivens. And then you got Mashal, you have Ariah, you have Shar, you have other brothers, Yaiquab as well. 
But then when you have this reincarnation doctrine that begins to spread in the school, they begin to split. House of David, where you get this brother right here, Bishop Nathaniel, IUIC's uh, founder, GMS, House of Israel, Taz Zedekiah, he believed that he was the Holy Spirit in the flesh. He died two years ago from COVID. <laughs> Look, I wasn't trying to make a joke. I was just trying to say, like, <laughs> that's when y'all was supposed to say, dang, that's messed up. Y'all over here laughing. Y'all don't keep no law. I'm just, all right. <laughs> Lawbreakers in here, so I'm just like. Then you got Yohanna with ISUPK. You got Rakai with GOCC. Rakai was the brother who debated James White. Y'all remember that a couple years ago? Yeah, we all remember that. All right. So, why is this important? So, this brother right here, Ariya, he made something called the 12 tribes chart. So, that's when you downtown, you're trying to have a good time with your wife, right? You're walking downtown, and then, then the brother say, hey, brother, come on over here. Come over here, brother. You got time for it. Who, 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 who is this? Where you lined up? What you, what you African? What you? I, I'm, I'm black. All right, cool. So, guess what? You Judah. That's what you are, brother. You are Judah. Okay, cool. I'm Judah. All right, what does that mean? That means you the true Israelites. All right, cool. All right. Now, you have other brothers who, who believes in something called Lashawan Kodash, which was started by Ariyah. Now, Lashawan Kodash is a, it's a fake Hebrew language. So, basically, for example, we, you would say Yeshua, right? Lashawan Kodash would say you need to call him Yahweh Shai. Oh, all right, yeah, yeah, Hawasha, right? Yeah, you got to call me Hawasha because that was the language that Ariah made up. So that's when you talk to a lot of Camp Hebrew Israelites, they'll call them Yahawasha. You know, they'll call them different names like that. That's what they call Lashawan Kodash is not real Hebrew. All right, big four Israelite camps. This is my favorite part. Not because of what they teach, it's just, yeah. All right, IUIC. We had a little history with IUIC this summer. Yeah. Um, this camp was found by Bishop Nathaniel Ben Israel. IUIC may be the largest Hebrew Israelite camp. He, IUIC is more strategic and organized than the other Israelite camps. IUIC's growth, and this is important, IUIC's growth is due mostly to their ability to attract middle class men. Now, some of you are like, what, what does that matter? This, this is big. IUIC is teaching men how to start businesses. They're starting men how to become homeowners, right? It's attractive. That's very attractive. Because they'll lead a church and say, the church ain't taught me how to deal with my finances, to be uh, better with my financial uh, ability or stability, to uh, uh, buy a house, to start a business. Now, I'm not saying that should be the whole thing of, the, uh, of every message of, uh, on a Sunday. But they're saying, man, well, I didn't learn that in the church, but I'm learning here. Middle class black men and Hispanics and Native Americans are leaving the church to go to IUIC. You know what that means? That's your average neighbor. That may be your average neighbor. In 10 years, if this thing keeps going up how it's going, your average neighbor may be a Hebrew Israelite. So them conversations of, hey, how you doing? Hey, Jim, how you doing? Jim going to be like, you keep them commandments, brother? I seen you eating that pork last night. Don't act like you wasn't. I seen some of y'all eating that pork last night, by the way. But I ain't going to say it. I ain't going to say nothing. <laughs> That's a true story. You can eat pork, though. Anyways. All right. Sakari. I drink some water for this one. This camp was found by a man named Alazar, a.k.a. Gorilla Hebrew. Sakari is the most wicked and value Hebrew Israelite camp out there. Sakari is growing fast amongst young people because of their style of dressing, but also because Sakari, and I must admit, Sakari is probably the most well versed camp. See, IUIC, for example, they don't mind, they, IUIC will say this we don't need, y'all foolish Christians always want to go into the Greek and the Hebrew. Well, wasn't the Old Testament written in the Hebrew, New Testament written in the Greek? We don't need that. These brothers would be like, all right, let's go into the Greek and let's go into the Hebrew. They don't mind that type of stuff. But you know why they wicked? I showed you that video to 200 million people that need to die, right? You remember that? Watch this video. 
This is even worse. I don't know what could be worse than that, but watch this. For a man to be brought into this world by a woman, and to see him turn around and say, well, she's the devil. Okay, that's dishonor. Because we all know how that resonates with us here. <laughs> and would I be wrong if I wish death to the white race? Of course not. So, would I be wrong if I wish death to your mother? No. So would I be wrong if I killed your mother? No. Come on, man, what the hell is this, man? See y'all, see y'all so terrible, y'all so terrible Christians. Cause every major point y'all wanna laugh. <laughs> Listen, this brother said, this brother Gorilla Hebrew, Gorilla Hebrew who's the founder of Sakari, he's mixed. He's Haitian and white. So brother Polite, ah, uh, that's a whole nother story. So brother Polite, He's like, listen, would I be wrong if I wish death to your mother? And you can see Gorilla Hebrew struggling. He said, no, nah. Berla Polite don't like white people either. He says, so is it okay if I killed your mama? He says, no. Nah. Brother Polite, who hates white people, even said, come on, dog. You taking it too far. You taking it too far. When a one cultist say you taking it too far, you done took it too far. But the reason why I show these videos is because some of y'all may be entertaining Sakari. And y'all be like, man, them brothers cool. No, 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 no. They want to kill people. The leader of Sakari says another man can kill his mama. How wicked can a brother be? And if you follow Sakari, you wicked too. I'm just being honest. Okay, well, I'm not even play that again. Now, this doctor may be even worse. This is GMS. Great Millstone Israelites. See, they so crazy, they don't even have a logo. So I had to find a, I had to find something. Then you got a logo. But this is Tahar. This is, he's the leader. Some of them in GMS believes that he's Apostle Paul reincarnated. You see that reincarnation thing? GMS is a camp that was founded by a man named Tahar. GMS is not organized as IUIC or appealing as Sakari. Now remember, Alazar, Gorilla Hebrew, he comes from GMS. They say, GMS says in a video, man, that brother was so wild, we had to kick him out the group. Nevertheless, GMS po is uh, uh, popular on the street corners. GMS is known for their rape doctrine. Let's watch a video. Let's go. Now, now what, what if someone is overwhelmed by the spirit? Brother Polite, once again, by the way, it's like God just set him up just to do this, like just to ask these wild questions. Spirit of the most high God, and he reads your scripture, and he take your daughter, and he just rape your daughter. What do you say to that? If he, if he live like you live, walk like you walk, talk like you talk. Because right, right. y'all live amongst each other. Y'all yeah. live amongst each other. So what happens when one of y'all feels so overwhelmed by the spirit of God that when you see one of each other's daughters, you just grab her up? You gonna tell one of these brothers here? Come on, you know the doctrine. You know how it get when you get. Well, well, answer it, answer it, answer it. We just told you that. that how would y'all respond? In this time, we're not, we're not this, that, that was. That was but if it did happen, hold on. But if it now, did happen, on. but if it did happen, you would let allow it to happen. What? Because you go back to the scriptures. You're supposed to be a brother. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You gonna allow one of your brothers to rape? Wait, your daughter. You say rape as if uh, rape simply means to grab. Oh, boy. Yeah, no, 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 no. We talking about no. We read the verse. We read the verse. No, where someone was so in the kingdom of heaven. I know. Too much no, no, no. We no, read no, the no, verse, man. When the kingdom is established, we gonna get women when they twelve years old. Right. All right. Say it again. I mean, come on. At this point, I don't even gotta teach nothing. I'm watching. I'm showing y'all videos. One, one camp wants to kill 200 million white people. Another dude said another man can kill his mama. Uh, the, this dude saying, I will let another man in my camp rape my 12-year-old daughter. How wicked can you be? But, these, but they'll tell you that, you know, we the true prophets. We the gods. 
We the true Israelites. You mean to tell me that you can break God's law in the old covenant and justify nonsense like this and still say you keeping the commandments of the Lord, the most high? This is foolishness. And guess what? If you follow GMS, you foolish too. Let's go. No. All right. I forgot about. All right, ISUPK. So this is Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge. This camp was found by General Yohanna. ISUPK is the oldest camp out of the big four. ISUPK typically attracts older men. Also, General Yohanna is second in charge, the first being Jesus, or what they would call Yahweh So they believe it's Jesus and then General Yohanna. Where is, uh, is Pastor Bennett in the building? Where Pastor Bennett at? He right. Pastor Bennett got a great debate. Matter of fact, Elder Mike and Pastor Bennett, they got a great debate with uh, Captain Cesariak. Did a phenomenal job. So I want to thank you, brothers, for continuing to put in the work. Thank you. <laughs> hey, if I had one, if I had videos for the other camps, you know I got to have a video for this camp too, right? Can't leave anybody. I can't leave people out. So this uh, your boy, Captain Cesariak. And he's talking to a little African boy on Sidenetta TV. Let's see how they go. this goes. But you won't bring in my little brother. He can't eat with us. No, because joining other nations is why we were destroyed as a people. I want you to know that all of us don't think like that. So don't let, don't let my brother, Tazar, I love my brother. This is my brother. And that's why we're trying to fix him. He's sick mentally. And we're trying to work on him. All of us don't feel like that. You know that brother can't cause you no harm. You telling me that if I was to bring him with me to the cookout, he can't come and eat with you? No. The black child, black baby, bro? No African, no Asian, no Chinese, no white man, no German, no Russian, Caucasian, no non-Israelite will ever eat with me at anything that I should be cares having or I'm having, period. Why would you, why would you terrorize me for saying that someone else did that I had no control over? Because the scriptures say, prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers. So, excuse me, brother. No sweat, man. No sweat. So, beca so because of the crimes that the forefathers, so because of the crimes that forefathers committed against us, is why I want them white babies to die. All right. So, so just so you know, if you ever but see you Captain Cesariak, uh, you can't go out to eat with him. So, don't invite him out. Don't invite him out. All right. I only got 14 minutes. Hebrew Israelite beliefs. Now, I want to be clear. All Hebrew Israelites don't believe the same thing. But these are mainstream beliefs, what the, the camps teach. This is what you're going to see on the internet, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, things of that sort. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so according to G Genesis 25, 25, what Hebrew Israelites believe, the white man is the devil slash Esau. The white man and other nations will be slaves in the kingdom to Israelites. They believe that is in Isaiah chapter 14 and also uh, Isaiah 61. The gospel is that God will save Israel from their enemies and destroy Israel's enemies. Did, did I mention Jesus in any of that? No, I didn't, right? That's a problem. Jesus died so that Israel can keep the law. Israel must keep all 613 laws. So Jesus died so you can keep the law that you couldn't keep. <clears throat> That don't make sense, right? The law of Moses has not been fulfilled by Jesus, but only the law, the sacrificial law has been fulfilled. But if the sacrificial law has been fulfilled, then that means like those five high holy days, you can't do it. You know why? Because they required a what? A sacrifice. All right. America is the Egypt that Deuteronomy 28, 68 is talking about. <clears throat> That's a problem. Because it says you should go on ships back to Egypt. Well, I didn't know we came to America the first time. I thought we... That's like my wife saying, uh, Des, go back up to Walmart. I said, cool, I'm going back up to Walmart. But then I pull up at CVS. That don't make no sense. All right. Black, Hispanics, and Native Americans fit the curses in Deuteronomy chapter, uh, in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 58 through 68. Uh, Israelites believe this is probably the only time you're going to hear about Jesus is that Jesus is a black man according to chapter 1 uh, chapter 1 verse 14 through 15 uh, what does it say it says for his head and his hair is white like wool say that slow his head 
in his hair. Head, hair, is white like wool. It didn't say that his hair is woolly. It says his hair is white like wool. And even guess what? I could isogeet the text like they do, and I could show you two scriptures to show you that God is a white man if I want to play that game that they play. Check this out. <clears throat> it says in uh, Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter 33, it says that when Esau, uh, uh, because remember Esau and Jacob reconciles in relationship. It says Jacob seen him, and he said when he saw Esau's face, he said it's like I seen the face of God. Now, if I want to play the game that the Israelites do, when you chop up scripture, I can tell you according to that and to Revelation chapter 1 that God is a white man, right? But you see how foolish that is, though, when you chop up scripture out of its context? This is why context matters when you read the Bible. Don't never let someone tell you you don't have to read the Bible in context. Matter of fact, you know what's also foolish? When somebody tell you, show me context in the Bible. Show me Bible in the Bible. You can't find it either. I got, I got 11 minutes, or Pastor Ken going to rebuke me. All right. They believe Christians are lawless. The Trinity is pagan. Uh, Israelites cannot marry outside of Israel. They say Paul's letters cannot be trusted. The same Paul that Christ revealed himself to, his letters can't be trusted because his letters are too hard to re read. But the Bible actually says, no, his letters are hard to read for those who are ignorant and twist Paul's letters. They say Gentiles are really Israelites in a, a carnal state of mind. No, 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 no. Ephesians chapter 2 kills all that because in, Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, he says for, no, 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 Gentiles in the flesh, not in the mind. What do we call an Israelite who wants to practice uh, Greek culture? What do we call him? A Hellenist. Uh, that's what we call him. We don't call him a Gentile. We call him a Hellenist. The Sabbath day must be kept according to Exodus 20 and 10, unless you're IUIC, who believes that God will forgive you for not working on the Sabbath, or for working on the Sabbath. So IUIC says they keep the law, statutes, and commandments, but on their website it will tell you, you can go and break the law, but grace covers that. One dude told me, if you was at Crossover last week, you know exactly what I'm talking about. One brother told me, Des, God's grace is like a DTE bill. God's grace is like an EDTE bill that he will cover up your sin. No, no, no. Do, do, do we continue in sin that what? That grace may abound? No, no. God forbid. So you're telling me you can break the law every Saturday because you got to go to work. It don't work like that. Because if you're going to keep one law, you better keep the whole entire law. And you better not make no excuses. <laughs> the King James Version is the only true Bible. It was five English ver versions of the Bible before we even get to King James. So they can't use that. I got nine minutes. See, y'all y'all talk, y'all be laughing, all that laughing y'all was doing, all that stuff got me running behind. All right. The Bible, so this is some rebuttals. The Bible shows us that Edomites could receive salvation. Acts chapter 26, verse 28 through 29. What was it? King Agrippa, who is what? An Edomite, right? King Agrippa is an Edomite. He says, Paul, are you trying to persuade me to be a what? A Christian? Paul says, man, I want you to be that, all of you in you, I want y'all to be that, and guess what, without these chains. Now, this is important, because if you're going to tell me that the white man is Esau and the Edomite, and Agrippa is an Edomite, this is a problem. Paul says, who is a Hebrew, right, supposedly a black man, he says, I want you to be a Christian. Not just a Christian, I don't want you to have these chains that I got. So how could a white man be Esau? And Paul says, I don't want him in chains, but I want you to have salvation. Christ is the one who brings salvation for every man. <laughs> salvation is for all nations. We see the author of the scriptures. Uh, uh, Isaiah 19, verse 21 through 25 tells us that Assyria, Egypt, and Esau, uh, and, uh, well, Esau too, uh, Assyria, Egypt, and Israel will be called blessed. And they will experience the salvation of Yahweh. They believe there will be slavery in the kingdom. No, it won't. Because there will be no slavery in the kingdom. Because according to Ephesians chapter 3, verse 6, the Bible tells us that the Gentiles and the Jews are what? Co-heirs. And they share the same promises. That's why when you read Genesis chapter 12, and it says all nations shall be what? Blessed. What is that blessing? Salvation in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, this is true in a sense 
The gospel is not only that God will save his people from their enemies. If you ever want to have a good conversation about salvation and how it looks uh, schematically in the Old and New Testament, talk to the apologist in Detroit, Chris Samuel. Awesome, awesome man of God when breaking down these scriptures. The gospel is not only that God will save his people from their enemies, but ultimately that Jesus Christ died for the forgiveness of all nations. Because what the camps would do, they'll take you to Luke chapter 1, verse 68, right? And they say, like, look, this is the gospel. No, 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 they don't read verse 77 through 79. And also Luke chapter 2, verse 32, that talks about salvation being for everyone and for the forgiveness of sins. Ooh, y'all got me tired. All right. I only got six minutes, y'all. I only got six minutes. All right. Due to Christ's death, God has ushered in a new covenant. How was the old covenant ushered in? By what? The shedding of what? Of blood, right? But Christ, due his death, is the shedding of blood, right? Introduces a new what? A new covenant, which the writer of Hebrews tells us that it's a what? A better covenant than the old. Yeah. I got a couple of scriptures. <clears throat> this is what I was talking about. Six minutes. All right. Genesis 33, verse 3, verse 5. <clears throat> it says this. It's talking about Esau and Jacob. He himself went on before them, bowing himself to the ground seven times until he came near to his brother. But Esau ran to, to meet him and embrace him and fell on his neck and kissed him. And they wept. And when Esau lifted up his eyes and saw the woman and children, he said, who are these with you? Jacob said, the children whom God has graciously given your servant. See, what they won't tell you, you know what the, what the camps won't tell you? They won't tell you that Esau and Jacob got cool. They'll say Esau, you know, he always been the same. God hates Esau. They'll tell you, they'll take you to Obadiah and all that type of stuff. But the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us, no, Jacob and Esau became cool. Israel and Esau became cool. That reconciliation was there. We already talked about the King Agrippa. Uh, we talked about uh, Isaiah 19. Let's keep going. It says this. Uh, Je Jesus fulfilled the law of Moses, Matthew 5, 17. Uh, what Israel couldn't do, Christ did. So everything Israel was supposed to do, the keeping of the law, uh, uh, treating the foreigners right, doing all those type of things, guess what? Jesus did that. Israel didn't. Jesus is the reality in the substance of the law of Moses. That's Colossians chapter 2, verse 16 through 17, Hebrews chapter 10 and 1. Christ is the reality of the feast days and high holy days. Look, I have no problem if you want to keep certain customs of the law. I don't, that doesn't bother us. I don't think that bothers any Christian. If you say, hey, I want to observe Sabbath day, that's cool. Just don't make it mandatory now. Because Christ has fulfilled those things. Amen? And check this out. Israel couldn't, uh, didn't keep the law of Moses, and therefore what? Broke the old covenant. This is why when you read Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 29 through 33, I believe it is, it talks about, look, the Lord says, for I have to make a new covenant, not like the, not like the covenant I made with what? Your forefathers coming out of Egypt. The new covenant ain't the old covenant. And please understand, just because I see things in the new covenant regarding uh, 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 righteousness or morality, that doesn't mean that just because uh, we shouldn't murder, that doesn't mean that the law of Moses was in the garden. That doesn't mean that. Because the Bible also says this in Romans chapter 5 and 3. It says this. It says that uh, sin was in the world before what? The law was given. What law was it talking about? The law of Moses. Galatians 3.17 tells us what? It tells us that uh, 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 the law came what? 430 years after Abraham. So it cannot be talking about the law of Moses. And then when the law of Moses was revealed, guess what? Israel couldn't keep it. But you know who did keep the law? Who? Y'all can do better than that. We ain't talking about who? Jesus. Jesus. There we go. That's right. There, give me on those, right? There we go. <laughs> to do one part of the law is to keep all of the law. Galatians 5 and 3. To break one part of the law is to break all of it. Uh, Elder Mike already talked about uh, uh, the early church worshiping God on Sunday. There's no regulation on that. We have that freedom in Christ Jesus. Amen. Man, it's so many, it's so many different ones. Um, 
the Bible does tell us that Israelites can marry outside of Israel. Who was Moses' wife? Well, she, she was African, right? She wasn't an Israelite, was she? So I guess if Moses was breaking the law when he did that? Oh, I got another one for y'all. Check this out. They were like, you know, when you're on a street corner, and they say, hey, who else had the yoke of irons on their neck? You know, you, know, you know what I'm talking about? And they show you that picture, and they give you Deuteronomy 28, 48, and it says, uh, therefore, shall, uh, you, therefore you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you in hunger and thirst and nakedness and lacking everything, and he will put a yoke of iron on your neck until he has destroyed you. That sound like, man, that sound like us, right? That sound like black people. Oh, my gosh. Until you start reading the Bible. You know who that happened to according to scripture? It happened to every nation. You, know, you don't believe me? Watch this. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put on the neck of all these nations a yoke of what? Iron to serve who? Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him, for I have given to him even the beasts of the field. Guess what? Deuteronomy 28, 48 was fulfilled in what? Deuteronomy, uh, Jer uh, Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 14. You can't play that game with me if I know my Bible. You can't. I don't know everything. It's a lot of you that know way more than me. What I refuse to do is get deceived by someone who eisegeta text when all I got to do is go through the cross references of the Bible. Guess who else went into captivity according to scripture? I got 34 seconds. I got to end it here. Esau went into captivity. Jeremiah 27, verse 1 through 4. Thus so the Lord said to me, make yourself straps and yoke bars and put them on your neck. Send word to who? The king of who? Edom, the king of Moab, the king of the sons of Ammon, and the king of Tyre, and the king of Sidon, by the hand of the envoys who have come to Jerusalem, to Zedekiah, king of Judah, and to give them to the charges of their masters. Who, you know who else had a master? Esau had a master. The white man had a master, according to them. I ain't got no more time, y'all.